But guys, we made it. We're at the dark room. This is Phil. Uh, he's going to give us a tour of the whole dark room lab. So let's go check it out. Welcome. Just wrapping up, processing the mail that's coming in, getting the mail sorted and opened up. Since we're doing single-use cameras, they usually uh, get done at the end. So once uh, once the film is sorted there and opened up, we bring it up front and uh, we will research the order by the order number and enter it into the system. This is one of the key key jobs in the lab because there are a lot of details. Almost every order is unique. Some orders will be will come in a bag like this. A lot of film. You see E6, HP5, Kodak uh, Portra. So uh, Cine still. There you go. Uh, right there. So these have to be split into various envelopes because of the different film types. Okay. And then they have to get matched back up in the end. So each each roll we produce a printed label and then they'll highlight what type of product it is with specially designated stickers depending on the product, special color codes depending on the service date. At this point, uh, our customers are notified that we have received and entered your order. We try very hard to enter the orders that come in today, get them all written up today, so they're in process either today or first thing tomorrow morning. How many rolls do you get typically per day? Oh, Monday we received uh, almost 500 packages. Wow. Ah, probably close to a couple thousand rolls. Does that affect turnaround time? How much do you get? Yeah, it does. I mean, it. You know, we, we can only do so much, and we, we, we there aren't corners to be cut. Mm -hmm. You know, every order goes through the same process. Right. Uh, and you'll see through the lab that everybody's working hard. Right. Nobody's goofing off hustle, because hustle. yeah, because people are you know depending on us to do the job. Summers are the busier months for right. us. Uh, plus, film has been growing also. Yeah. So, Resurgence. Yeah, about film keep, you know, uh, new people coming to film. We're getting lots of notes of people saying, my first roll of film ever, please don't judge me. We get yeah. such a kick out of that. <laughs> no judgment. Yeah, no, no judgment. No judgment left. So. Again, this is the, the freedom of processor for black and white. And over here, track processor for C41. This is a Fuji Frontier 375 that's been converted to true black and white. We run Milford uh, pearl and glossy paper. So we're one of the few labs in the country, if not the world, that are able to produce proof prints off of your uh, fresh rolls of film at a pretty affordable price. And this is all film that's recently come off of uh, the processor that will be, is all sorted by type and size and will be then routed to the appropriate scans. You can see we have racks here. Uh, these are racks for black and white right here. This is a darkroom pass door. Uh, lots of people have seen them, some people haven't, but uh, it keeps, it keeps, it keeps the dark in the dark and the light in the light. From my, my dark room days in high school and college. <laughs> we also are one of the few labs that can do all types of infrared uh, film. Black and white infrared, E6 infrared, and C41 infrared. This is the uh, controller for the E6 processor. Uh, Okay to open under 90, or actually 127 now. We're at 64, so this is the driver. So after you can see the film coming out right now. So this is E6 film coming through the dryer. And this is a 
traditional dip and dump processor, you can tell because the film is flipped and it goes through the processor. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like that. Yes. So this is what, uh, when I worked in the lab, this is what I did. This is, okay, yeah. then you can, you can I pulled see it out. I pulled yeah. it out, <laughs> taped it to the leader, and then let's see if I remember how to do it. I don't know, I don't know. You can slide it in. Yeah, it just pulls the film. Bring me back right now. This part right here. <laughs> this is where uh, part, one of the areas where we do uploads and uh, retouching, scanning, that type of thing. So we'll take those orders that are being packaged, put them in a yellow bucket, and then we'll inspect, do the upload to the customer, and then sign off on them, and then they go in a green bucket so that they can go. And that's to, the final step. That's right? that's the final step. Green means go. So once they're in a green bucket, they can go over to mailing, and then they'll get mailed out. Awesome. Once they're here, they've been delivered electronically to the customer. Right. The next step is to do the physical mailing, which these will get mailed out to my so That's a pretty easy part. Yeah. Yeah. Mailing. How awesome was that, guys? I had such a great time getting a tour of the Darkroom Lab. Thank you again to Phil and everybody who, you know, gave us a peek behind the curtain. Um, I did get a chance to sit down with Phil and kind of chat a little bit as well. So I wanted to show you guys that right now. Check it out. So thank you so much for taking the time to give us the tour, Phil. That was that was pretty amazing. Well, like, thanks, all, thanks for stuff. coming up, Chris. Yeah, a lot of people doing a lot of different aspects of, of the, you know, the whole beginning to the end, which is I love to see like where a roll of film comes and starts and where it ends up and how it goes off. So that's that was really awesome. But I want to take uh, a little bit of your time just to kind of ask you like how you got started with the darkroom and photography. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Great. The history of the darkroom goes back over 40 years. Uh, it started out in the San Francisco Bay Area and through our lab here, about 15 years ago, we bought another business in the Bay Area called The Dark Room. Uh, we operated that lab for a number of years up in San Francisco. And then as the business really declined uh, dramatically, so many labs went out of business, then we just we consolidated The Dark Room into our lab here in San Clemente. And brought the name and the concept of the dark room with us and have built the business around that. Uh, realizing that so many labs have closed, people people need a way, a convenient way to, and a reliable way to get their film competently scanned uh, and, and developed, printed. So that's where we came in uh, and that's kind of been our mission. Uh, and film has resurged in the last few years. I mean, we see lots of evidence of mm -hmm. people that are new to film. Mm -hmm. We got a letter recently from an older gentleman, probably an old guy like my age or something, because he, his, his son turned him on to the darkroom because the, the kid's been shooting film and the dad got reinterested in film after shooting digital for the last 15 years. So now he got his old film That's equipment back <laughs> out and he's shooting film again. Yep. So it's going both ways with young people coming to film new and then even other people returning to film just for the obvious pleasures and joys that I don't need to explain that, that film have to offer. Film photography and film cameras are, it's, it's just such a wonderful hobby and it's an endless hobby that you can continue to grow in and learn, you know, different things from all the crazy different cameras that were produced over the mm -hmm. years to the formats. We talked about 4x5 and 8x10 right. photography. I've been in the photographic business all my life. I was born into it. My father had labs. Uh, but I've never personally shot 8x10. Uh, so it's something that's intriguing mm -hmm. me now. So, you know, I know there, there are, you know, further trails to follow, you know, in the, in, in the hobby of photography. And I just happen to be one of those very fortunate people that uh, I'm able to do what I love. Yeah. Know, I'm able to work in right. what I love. Uh, it's still work and it's hard yeah. and there's a lot of pressure and responsibility, but it's still within the field that uh, is just so rewarding. I was going to say, it's the most rewarding part where you get to work and do what you love at the same time. Yeah, and yeah. I share with you some stories of letters we've gotten from people with old film and uh, 
you know, just the, the personal connections that the film has to people, and the, the, the invaluable time capsule mm -hmm. that you hold in your hand when you've got this roll of film. Yeah. But that, you know, that uh, that's all part of it, and the, you know, and then you have the newer shooters, the cine still film. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of cine still. We love the results. Uh, uh, Take Ko, I think you know mm -hmm. Take. Yeah, yeah. He's been shooting a lot of cine still, getting some great results over in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. uh, he did a recent trip over there. Uh, yeah, so it's just you know a lot of new fresh things. Uh, Kodak's new 3200 P3200. Yeah, uh, huge fan of. Yeah, black and white. It's uh, it's an awesome film. Check out uh, the Darkroom blog for a uh, test that Trev did mm -hmm. uh, comparing. Uh, Delta 3200 and the Kodak 3200 films with some good blown up portions side to side. see the mm -hmm. grains. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a good reference point. I but hope they uh, keep, keep coming coming out with new stuff. Yeah, it know. just refreshes things. It keeps adding adding excitement to the whole to the whole realm. Yeah, uh, I guess one of the sadder parts is that film cameras are becoming a little harder to find mm -hmm. and a little more expensive. Mm -hmm. Some of them are becoming a lot more expensive. Yep. Uh, so that's that's uh, that's a little bit of a minus, but uh, well, still. Hopefully that leads way to people, you know, companies realizing we need to put out film cameras. Right. Get all our fingers and toes crossed for that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Special thanks again to Phil and everybody at the Darkroom Lab. Thank you to Andre Dominguez for filming and taking a trip up there with me. Thank you to my editor, Johnny Glitch. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.